Hi there, 6303. In this video, we're going to discuss the basics of qualitative research and how it differs from quantitative research. As with the quantitative research video, this video is designed to get you familiar with the terminology and design elements. There are a variety of approaches to qualitative research, but for the purposes of this course, I'm going to pull from Cresswell's Chapter 9 and my own training on qualitative methods. For this video, we're going to focus on the following objectives. We want to define qualitative research in general terms, identify basic design elements of qualitative research, identify participant selection techniques and generalizability, and identify when to use qualitative research, when to use quantitative research, and when to use mixed methods. Quantitative research is primarily exploratory research. Qualitative research is primarily exploratory research. It is used to gain an understanding of underlying reasons, opinions, and motivations. It provides the researcher with insights into the problem or helps them develop ideas or hypotheses for potential quantitative research. In general, we use qualitative research because it is inductive in nature. It does not test a hypothesis. We use it to observe patterns in behaviors, languages, documents, etc. We conduct it in a natural setting. We use it to dig deep so we can provide a thick, rich description of an experience. We recognize that the role of the researcher is subjective and that our biases play into how we analyze the data and how we view the participants. We also recognize that there are multiple truths and multiple realities, and that what is true for one participant may not be true for another. We're going to collect data from multiple sources, and we understand that qualitative research is an alternate understanding of scientific. Through qualitative research, we are able to examine the complexity of human experiences and provide alternate ways of knowing. Rather than focusing on the effect or effectiveness like we do in quantitative research, we use qualitative research to generate and develop new ideas, investigate strength and weaknesses of a curriculum protocol or treatment, understand dynamics of decisions, study reactions to curriculum protocol, etc. Study emotions and attitudes of a group of people who do not often have a voice understand perceptions, determine language as a preliminary step to developing a quantitative survey, generate ideas for improvement, understand information from a quantitative study to contextualize the numbers. So you can see qualitative research has a very different purpose than quantitative research, but they are two types, but the two types complement and feed each other. Let's look at some of the most popular designs for qualitative research. Cresswell states that the five most common types of qualitative research are narrative, phenomenology, ethnography, case study, and grounded theory. In a narrative type design, you're going to capture personal and human dimensions of experience over time and take account of the relationship between individual experience and cultural context. The purpose of a narrative design is not to represent life as lived, but our re-presentation of those lives as told to us. In phenomenology, we're going to focus on people's meanings of a lived experience, and our goal is to find the essence of that experience. In an ethnography, we're going to do an in-depth study of a culture or a facet of culture over time. Much of this data is going to come from field notes. Traditionally, ethnographies were done in the location of the culture and the researcher moved into like the village or just outside of that village and observed that culture for at least a year. Now we can do ethnographies a little bit faster, but they're still over time. They take a lot of time to collect that information. A case study is an in-depth investigation of a single group, community, or event. Grounded theory is used to uncover such things as social relationships, social behaviors, or social processes. 
data collection and analysis occurs simultaneously to produce a new th Let's go back to scenario two from the quantitative video. As the principal at an elementary school, I found out through my quantitative research that the Fountas and Pinnell guided reading program wasn't as effective as we had hoped it would be. We know this program is grounded in research and the district has already spent a lot of money on it. So I'm going to dig deeper and figure out what is going on. I'm going to do a case study with a set of my elementary teachers to investigate their opinions about the program, including how they're implementing it and what they are getting out of the professional development that we provide them. For scenario three with the school counselor, I figured out my guidance lessons are having a small impact on student and parent understanding of selecting a post-secondary program, but I want to investigate what first-generation college students go through as they move through high school and into their freshman year of college. Because I am focusing on a specific facet of a culture over time, I will use ethnography. For scenario four, with the professor teaching the online course, I found out through my quantitative research that my students are absorbing more content through the videos and that they have given the course high ratings. But I noticed not all of the students are watching all of the videos, and that is reflected in their written course assignments. I want to know how students are or are not using the videos and why they may or may not access them. For this study, I would use grounded theory to explore their processes for learning course content with technology. There are many more types of qualitative designs and you may come across these additional types when you begin researching, when you begin reading to research your own problem in your field. I encourage you to do a little exploring to discover just what that methodology is. For our third objective, we want to talk about how participants are selected for a qualitative study. Because qualitative research aims to dig deep, we do not want to use a large number of participants. Since there are multiple forms of data used during analysis, using a large number of participants would likely prevent the researcher from ever even finishing the research. For example, when I was conducting my dissertation, I followed a songwriter through his writing process. Through interviews, observations, videos, and artifacts, I wound up with over 300 pages of data. It took me a solid month of just working on coding and analyzing all that data from him to get through it. If I were to have tried to look at a wide number of participants, say like 10, I would have never finished my dissertation, nor would I have been able to dig deep with my analysis and to find patterns that triangulated across multiple sources. Jones Sargent describes the difference between quantitative and qualitative participant selection as this. Quantitative research requires standardization of procedures and random selection of participants to remove the potential influence of external variables and ensure generalizability of results. In contrast, subject selection in qualitative research is purposeful. Participants are selected who can best inform the research questions and enhance understanding of the phenomenon under study. Hence, one of the most important tasks in the study design phase is to identify appropriate participants. Decisions regarding selection are based on the research questions, theoretical perspectives, and evidence informing the study. The subject sampled must be able to inform important facets and perspectives related to the phenomenon being studied. For example, in a study looking at professionalism, intervention, representative participants could be considered by role, residents and faculty, perspective, those who approve, disapprove of the intervention, experience level, junior and senior residents, and or diversity, gender, ethnicity, or other background. If you'd like to read Joan Sargent's article, you can visit the link provided. To summarize, in qualitative research, you want to purposefully select participants who you can observe in their natural setting, who participate in the events or phenomenon you want to study, and who can describe the processes you are investigating. Because a single participant will generate a large amount of data, you want a small number of participants. 
Since you are only examining a small number of participants, your results will not be generalizable to a larger population. That is not the aim of qualitative research. Our fourth objective hits on when to use a mixed method approach. Earlier in this video and in the quantitative research video, we discussed scenarios where we could use either type of research to conduct our study, and the method we would choose will depend upon the information we were looking for. Some researchers have a tendency to pit qual and quant against each other. However, the two are not mutually exclusive and one is not more correct than the other. Your research questions are what will determine which type of research you need to conduct. Sometimes researchers find they want to collect both types of information, so they will conduct a mixed method study. Usually, mixed method studies prioritize one method to focus their research and then add an additional method to enhance the information uncovered. Let's look at some examples of mixed method studies. In a study investigating adolescent alcohol use, the researcher used qualitative data, small group study of three mental constructs. They interviewed these small groups and then qualitative data was used to construct a quantitative survey to measure expectancies, cultural orientation, and self-efficacy. In a study on leadership performance in practice-based networks, the researchers used qualitative methods to interview and survey small groups to determine leadership behaviors, decision-making activities, and performance expectations. From that data, they then created a clinician member performance measure and the quantitative survey measure was administered to clinician members. On a study that investigated how and why digital generation teachers use technology in the classroom, the researchers first did a quantitative survey on 71 participants that they conducted online. From those 71, they selected six participants purposefully, interviewed those participants, and then determined what their self-efficacy, perceived computer skills, and technology access and support were. That concludes all of the new content for this video. To gain a deeper understanding, you can read Chapter 9 of their Crestwell text, available in PDF format in the Module 1 folder. We recommend you also study the Qual Quizlet terms, and you can access that link in the directions of the Module 1 folder as well. See you in the next video.